Lord, for everything that he has done. And, and Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy, for your mercy, for for your for everything that that is happening in our lives, and, and not just the good things, God, but even the bad part, even the the, the the feelings and the things that we don't like, God. But we know that everything works together for those that love you, God. And we believe that we are here with a purpose, that we are here with a mighty calling. And today we want to leave our voices and we want to glorify your name, about all names, the name of Jesus. And sing, because it says, come before your presence. We sing it. We worship. And Lord, open our eyes, open our hearts, open our mouth, our heart, our lives. In order to worship you, to honor you, and give you praise with everything, everything that we have in this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's worship and let's sing and let's glorify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, God, because you're worthy, worthy. Come on, I'm after your heart. And now I'm after your heart. But should I be still when the worship stops, Lord? I'm so in love with you. What can a man do? Get on me back anymore. You spend, and you spend over me, and you are pleased when I spend myself on you. And I'm gonna let go now. Really worship the lady, my dance go for. I'm so in love. I'm so in love with you. And what can a man do? Can I be back anymore? What do you spend? Can you spend over me? And you are pleased when I spend myself on you. And I'm going to let go. I really worship the lady in my dance home for them.
it. Oh, let the Spirit
take a moment, just close your eyes. Come on, we worship. Can you can you thank Jesus for everything that He has done? Come on, just take a moment right there. If you are here in the house, if you're online, and just close your eyes for a moment. Just put your mind in Jesus. I know we have to think about the job, about the kids, about I mean groceries, shopping. I mean, there's a lot of things in our agenda, but let's take a moment right now. Let's put our eyes in Jesus and you can say, Lord, I want to thank you for everything that you have done, God. I want, every, I want to thank you because you've been so faithful, God. Yes, we, sometimes we are unfaithful. But yes, sometimes we don't obey your words, sometimes we don't meditate in it, we don't pray. God, you remain faithful, and, and you're our Father, and today we just want to thank you. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our children. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for our jobs. Thank you for Canada, God. Thank you for your goodness. Come on, just take a moment right there. Take, take a moment and just give thanks to, the, to God for everything that you have in your hands right now. Because it's by grace. Because everything is for him and by him. And today, just take a moment right there and say, Lord, we thank you for, for my health. Thank you because I'm, I'm, I'm healthy. Thank you, God, for my mind. Thank you for my ideas, for my dreams, for my plans. Thank you because I have expectation in my heart that there's something great is coming for my life, for my family, for my generation. And I know I cannot do it myself. And I know I, I cannot do it at my own strength. But I need your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for your presence among us. And we thank you, God, because even though Jesus said that he was living, you left the Holy Spirit to stay and to become alive in our hearts. And now we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And today we worship, we honor, we are word, we are lives, we are heart, we are minds. We want to say, yes, God, thank you. Yes, God, thank you because everything that we have is because of you. Thank you because we are here today. We stand today before you by the grace of God. We stand here before you by the blood of Jesus. And we thank you because it's not us doing it, but it's you doing it through us. We thank you, God, because it's not our own effort, but it's your goodness, it's your mercy that is upon us. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship one more time. And let's say, God, we thank you. And we glorify your name with everything that we have because you're faithful, because you will remain faithful forever, forever. Amen.
glorify your name, my Lord. We declare that you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We declare that you are the life, you are the bread, you are the only way to the Father. You are our Lord and Savior, our healer, our fortress, our rock. You are our shield, Lord. We depend of you. everything that you have provided this week. Thank you for everyone that is in the house and thank you for everything that is online. And even those people that are going to listen to the podcast later on, Father, we bless them wherever they are. I know there's people from India too, in Europe, God, we pray your glory can touch their lives and we declare provision in their homes, we declare healing in their lives, we declare restoration in their families, God, in the name of Jesus. And even doors opening right now jobs, for plans, for ideas. God, bless them wherever they are, God, in the name of Jesus. And I, we pray right now for missionaries around the world, so we Father, empower them, touch them, cover them with your mighty hand, and the angel of the Lord around them today, tomorrow, forever, God. Thank you, because even though we cannot go there, we can bless them, and we pray for those that are risking their lives to share the good news of Jesus. We thank you, God, because we are not from this earth, but we are eternal. And one day we're going to see you face to face. And, and we're going to hear those, those words saying, faithful servant. <laughs> and we thank you, God. We thank you because we're eternal. We're going to be in eternity for you and with you. If we are preparing our hearts right now, and we're just going to take a moment right now to give our tithes and offerings. And, and we just want to thank you for the provision in our house. Let's give thanks to God for our jobs. And Father, we thank you for our jobs and our provision. Because it's not that we are smart. It's not that, that we are good enough. It's that your grace is so good. You opened, for, you opened the door for us in that job. You brought us to that job. And, and Father, we bless our, our bosses and we bless our supervisors. We declare healing their lives, healing their lives in the name of Jesus. We declare, Father, that you're touching their lives, the marriages and children, God. We, we bless their businesses. We bless, Father, everything in, their, in, in the company that we work for so it can prosper. Because if they prosper, we will prosper. So we bless them and we bless, Father, every, every co-worker that we work with in the name of Jesus so we can become a light for them. So we can become a light of hope. A light of blessing. So today, Father, we bring our tithes and offerings. Understanding that everything belongs to you. And understanding, God, that, that when you ask us for 10%, we believe. Because the Bible said that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So yes, God, we believe that it's more 90% with my God than 100% without Him. And today, Father, we declare you are provider. You are shepherd. And we shall not be in one, but you will provide everything that we need according to your riches and glory. Bless us. Bless us with new ideas for work. Bless us, Father, with, with a strategic uh, plans that can, we can share with our supervisors. And they can see something in us, like Pharaoh saw something different in Joseph. But they can see something different in us. So we can declare, yes, it's not from me. Because Joseph told Pharaoh, it's not me, it's God that he gives the interpretation of a dream. So yes, God, it's not us that we go to work in our own strength, in our own ideas, plans, wisdom, but it's your spirit in us. So Father, today we declare, yes, we will give you tithes and offerings, declaring God that you're opening doors in heavens for new ways of prosperity, blessing in the name of Jesus. And we declare open heavens this week in our jobs. And our financials. We declare that any debt, any poverty is broken in the name of Jesus. And we declare abundant life in everything that we do. In the name of the Lord, we pray together. Amen and amen. If you have tithes and offerings, come and just give to the Lord. Give thanks for the provision this week. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, can you just worship for a moment? Just let the glory of God prepare the word of God.
Jesus, Jesus, this morning. for your word and we declare that you're going to speak to us this morning open our ears and our understanding for your word we thank you and we welcome your Holy Spirit we welcome the anointing of your presence in this house that it breaks the shackle that it breaks the joke and destroy any plan of the enemy upon our lives but it's broken it's removed it's cancelled and today we declare that we are free in Jesus name we free need to receive the word and the revelation of it in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we said together this morning, amen and amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, worship. Thank you for this moment, hallelujah. Thank you those that are here, and we thank you that those that are online. I know you are there, and, and I know maybe some of you are listening and are downloading this podcast later on, and we thank you for being faithful, and we thank you for taking the time to come and, and receive the Word of God. Jesus said, not from not just bread, not just from bread, man shall live, but for, from every word that is coming out of the mouth of God, and, and, and we thank God for His Word, amen? We thank you because He gives us hope, He gives us blessing and encouragement, and I believe today... We have an instruction from Holy Spirit. And if you have your Bible, I've been meditating this word and I've been meditating in, in, in this in this passage because we are living I, I believe and I'm not I'm not saying that we are living in we we are living in dangerous times. Dangerous times as believers, dangerous times as as son and daughter of God, dangerous times as family. And and I believe we have the key of success. And I'm gonna share it this morning because in John 15, I wanna read it with me in verse 4 and 5 right there. It says it says this, abide in me. And, and I, I want to read it with you and I'm going to ask everybody to come to the temple. I don't know why people are leaving. But I'm going to ask everybody to come and receive the word of God this morning. It says, abide in me and I in you as the branch, it says this, cannot what? Cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine Neither can you unless you abide in me. I want to read one more because right there Jesus is speaking something. Abide in me and I in you. This is not, this is not, Jesus is not saying, okay, come to church. No, 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 no. Come and see. No, it's abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide where? In me. And Jesus, say with me, in Jesus. And verse 5 says this, I am the vine. Remember, Jesus is speaking here. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit. And look what he says at the bottom. For without me, you can do nothing. For without me, the Lord says, you can do nothing. The New Living Translation says this, from, For apart from me, you can do nothing. And in the contemporary version, English says this, But you cannot do anything without me. And then the boy says this, without me, you will accomplish nothing. And we said together, amen. Listen, we have plans. We have ideas. Amen. You have dreams. You know how many dreams, how many plans. But something that I know, that I know is that without Jesus, I cannot do it. Without Jesus, I'm going to fail. And you know what? I was last night, we were reading the devotional. And many of us, we have read the parable of the prodigal son. The son that he came to his father, and he said, Father, give me what is what's right for me. And he took his inheritance, and he left, and he went to another country, the Bible says. But he went over there and spent all his money. Everything that God, every, everything that God gave him, he spent him in a, in a, in a worldly life, and he, and he ended eating with the pigs. The servant, he was wishing to eat the, what, oh, I want what the pigs are eating. And yes, we understand that that parable is for those that, that maybe walk away from the Lord. And yes, God has welcomed them anytime with open arms. And we are glad to hear that. But I believe also this parable teaches us that without the Father, without the blessing of the Father, we will perish. How many people today believe in Jesus? 
How many people today believe in the Lord and they've been praying for maybe a job and maybe they're praying for open doors and maybe they've been praying for different things and as soon as they get it, you know what? They go and they believe they can do it themselves. They believe they can do it without the Lord. They just say, oh, well, I have my blessing. I have my job. I have my dream. And they start walking and somehow they depart from the presence of God and they depart. No, I'm not saying that they stop believing because it's not just believing but having a relationship. Amen. The Apostle Paul says, have communion. The communion with the Holy Spirit will be with all of us. And I believe the prodigal son not just uh, went in, uh, into another country, but he left the, co the, the overseeing of his father. He left the blessing of the father. And you know that in that parable, the father represents the heavenly father. And Jesus is saying, here's something to the disciples. Yes, you can have this plan. Yes, you can do this. But you have to understand something. Now you belong to a body. Now you belong to a structure. No, we don't belong to a religion. We don't belong to a church. We belong to a kingdom. And our king of kings and lord of lords is the one that, that is holding us together. And we need to understand that, yes, the world is pushing us out, out of the glory of God. You know, many people today, they're not coming to church. They don't read the Bible. They don't pray because they have a job to do. They have entertainment. They are tired. They are weary. All many things to do. Pastor, I cannot do it. And they are walking away from the Lord. But Jesus is saying, well, look, look. Without me, you will accomplish nothing. And the enemy is pushing us out and out. I know many Christians that used to walk with God, used to come to church. But right now they are walking away. And maybe for a little they feel good. And maybe for a little they feel success. But it will be at a point where they are going to come and they say, you know what? I realized something. I cannot do anything without Jesus. And I have walked through that path already. I tried to do my own stuff. I try to have my own plans, and let me tell you something. We are smart enough to get a good ideas, and, and I remember my plan. And, 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 and when, I, when I understand that when I, don't have a, when I have a plan and Jesus is not, in, is not in that plan, I need to destroy it and do it again. Because Jesus is really clear here. Without me, you cannot do what? Anything. Yes, it might work a little bit. It might work for a, for, for a few years. But after that, you know what? It will come, and it will be suffered. Remember what Jesus said about the house on the rock? Yes, it will come, and rain will come, and winds will come. And if the house is not on the house, if the house is not on the rock, it will what? It will be destroyed. If God is not building the house, and then we're working as laborers. And Jesus is saying this morning, are you walking away from God? And which are your life? You are planning things without Jesus. And the enemy knows that if 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 if, if he can somehow. And some any and the disobedience and rebellion and doubt and fear and whatever he can just touch that area of your life and move you out of the presence of God, you're gonna suffer the consequences. Because Joshua 24 20, look what it says right there. It says, If you forsake in the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after he has what? Done you good. Joshua understood that if he left, if the people leave God behind, they will suffer the consequences. And the enemy knows that. And I know many things are coming into our lives. Busy agenda. Oh, I have hobbies. I, 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 am, I have a new social life, an agenda, and I cannot do it. Well, let me tell you something. Jesus says this. You, if you abide in me, in, in me and you, you will be, have great fruit. But without me, you cannot do what? Anything. That's what Joshua said in 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart. I like that part. Depart. This book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to the, the all that is written in it. For then you will make your, come on, can you read it? Your way prosperous, and you will have good. Come on, read it. Will good what? Success. Why? Because you remain. Because you stay in the Word. And according to the Gospel of John, who's the Word? Jesus is the Word. 
If you remain in him and he in you, you will what? Have great success. My question is this morning, or I believe the question of God is this morning, what area of your life is departing from God? Because it could be your time. Maybe you don't have time for God anymore. Maybe you don't have time for the Bible. Maybe your prayer is not used to. Maybe you read the Bible. No, maybe you are not coming to church. Maybe you are not serving Jesus. At what area of your life is departing from Jesus? Because Jesus said, I am the vine. What is the vine? It is the tree. We are the branches. We are not. Listen, we need to understand something. God doesn't depend of us. We depend of God. He is a mighty God. He's eternal forever and ever. You and me, we're going to live. The Bible says that we are like the, sh like, 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 like the shadow. You, what, sorry, like the, like the grass. When it grows in the morning and the afternoon is gone. You're going to live maybe 85, 90 years old. But let me tell you something. That God is the God forever and ever. He's the King of kings, Lord of lords. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. We are nothing in compared to his glory. So he doesn't depend on us. We depend on him. I understand in my life that I've been, I've been disobedient, I've been rebellious, but I understand something. Without him, nothing works in my life. Without his glory, without his wisdom, without the direction of Holy Spirit, those that are led by Holy Spirit are children of God. My question this morning is, in which area of your life you are walking away from God? In which area of your life your mind, your heart is departing from God? Because today God is saying, without me... You can do nothing. James 4 says this, and that's the invitation from God this morning. James 4 a says, draw near to God, and he will what? Draw near to you. You know what, you know what David, you know what David told Solomon? He says, Solomon, if you leave God, he will leave you. But if you remain faithful, he will remain faithful. And today we're living dangerous times because the same way as Satan came to Jesus to tempt him, the same way is coming to us. Are you going to read the Bible? Ah, come on. Open the Netflix, the, you, the YouTube, Facebook. Go with your friends. Look at that job. Don't worry about church. Don't worry about serving God. And you know what? Our hearts are starting departing. The Bible says that Solomon, grow, he loved the Lord. He was faithful to God. But he says in the old days, women came to his life. And women made his heart depart from the Lord. And I believe we're dangerous time when today Christians and believers need to come to God every morning. Need to draw himself near to God because without him, we cannot do what? Anything. Psalm 63a, he says this, and I like this, because I hope that your prayer this morning. And it says, yes, my soul follows. Come on, read it. Close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. Come on, if you read the book, the Bible, the story of Jacob, you understand that Jacob tried to do his own plan. Actually, he was following his mom plan. His mom told him to do this. He failed. His own plan failed. And he realized something. I need to seek God. And that's why you're going to find the battle between God, between Jacob and God and Peniel. And Jacob said, God, I'm not going to leave you until you what? Bless me. And let me tell you something that... That we have plans and we, wanna, we, wanna, we want our generation to be blessed. I want my kids to be blessed, amen. I want a blessing generation after me. But I understand something that without Jesus, it will fail. Without Jesus, it will be something in vain in my life. Why? Because it's written. Come on, say you say, say with me, it's written. So what we need to do, well, we need to follow God close behind him. Close. I need to be close to him every day. Not just on Sundays. Not every day, every eight days. Well, every time I, I open up. No, no, I need. Come on, can you say, well, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. You know, I, I remember one day I went to, I went to um, um, a trip with my family, and I, I almost drowned. And let me tell you, you know what? It was, I was little. I was probably 
maybe 12 years old, when I, when I almost drowned, and, and, and I remember, I, I can remember when, how, my, how desperate I was in order to breathe. You know, I, I was seeing water, I couldn't breathe, I was almost dying in the middle of the water, and I, I remember, it was, it was something that happened years, years ago, and I still remember because I need air. And you need to understand something, today we, don't, we need more Jesus than the air that you breathe, you need Jesus more than the job that you have. You need Jesus more than the hell. You know why? Because he, he is life. He is the eternity. He is the resurrection. He is the power. He is the provision. He is your healer. Everything that you need is him. But if the enemy deceives you, if the enemy puts something in your life and he moves you away from Jesus, Joshua said it. If we, I want to read one more time. In Joshua 24, 20. Can you stand up for a moment? Come on. Look what Joshua says right there. If you forsake the Lord and serve somebody else, serve something else. Look what happened. He will turn and do you harm and consume you after he has done you. And the enemy knows the Bible better than you and me. That's why Solomon said in Proverbs, guard your heart because from it. You know, I've been tempted with money, with job, with, I mean, if the enemy came to, listen, if Satan came to Jesus, you don't think he's going to come after you? You know, you don't think he's coming after your, your family? You know, we have people here that, that they need a miracle of God in their lives. And I remember they were faithful. They were coming. We were praying for them. And as soon as they got the miracle, they're gone. And as soon as God opened the nation of Canada, oh, I got my papers. Thank you very much, Pastor. See you later. My question is, which area of your life is departing from God? Because Jesus saying this, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him bears much fruit. That's John. Can you put a 15 5? For without me. And I pray Holy Spirit is touching you like right now with this part of the Bible. For without me, you can do nothing. Some people are building towers like Babel. Oh, I can do it. I don't need God. Oh, I am smart enough. I am. You know what? As soon as the storm shows up, as soon as the wind shows up, it will come down. But those that remain in Jesus, those that remain in His presence and His Holy Spirit, you know what it says? You will bear so much fruit. Today, my question is, what area of your life is departing from the glory of God? Because that's the, the only answer. You have it. I believe for a lot of us it's different. We have different battles. But I believe Holy Spirit is pounding today in this world. Without me, you can do anything. That's why every decision that we make, we pray. You're going to buy a house, a car, pray. You're going to buy, you're going to get a job, you're going to apply for a job, pray. Come on, we need Jesus every day in our life. We need Jesus at school. We need Jesus at work. We need Jesus in our marriage. We need Jesus in our business. But if we allow something to touch our hearts, that's why we give tithes and offerings because money is not our God. We don't serve the money. So people say, I don't, I'm not going to give tithes and offerings because... I can spend that money somewhere else. Well, somewhere else is not going to give you healing. It's not going to bless you. It's not going to restore you. It's going to... God does. 
And actually, if you read the Bible, it says that people need to tie an offering because God is testing their hearts. And I used to be like that, but, but when I come my, my offering and my giving, it's the Lord, money is not my God. You are my God. And everything that I have belongs to you anyway. I'm just returning a little bit of everything that you give me, God. Same when I come into church, his uh, time is not my time, it's his time. So when you come to church, don't look at the church like, oh, oh, church. No, no, you are investing into the glory, into the blessing of your generation. Because with him, we're going to bear so much fruit. So today the invitation is this, do not walk away from God. Do not let anything and anyone move your heart from the rock of your salvation. There's no money. There's no love. There's no hobby. There's no addiction. There's nothing in this world that it can separate us from the love of God. And today, Father, we take a mighty decision in our lives. Today we want to declare and want to confess, yes, Father, forgive us. Because in some area in our life, we try to do it our own. Because in some area in our life, we try to do our own plan and our own idea. But Jesus said right there in Gethsemane, it's not my will, but your will, Father. So, Father, we want to remain in your presence. I want my family to remain in your glory forever and ever, God. Without you, I will fail. Without you, I will be defeated. Without you, I will be, Father, destroyed. But without, with you. And I love what it says in Romans. But if God is for us, who can be against us? And today, Lord, we declare that we are under the glory of God Almighty. And we are the branches. We are not the vine. He is the vine. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. And my family, my marriage, my health, my wisdom, my knowledge, my strength depends on Jesus. So today I just grab my hands and say, Lord, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you, God. Help me to remain faithful. Help me, help me to remain, Father, serving your name, honor you, glorifying you. Hallelujah. Come on. If you if you understand your life, that if you walk a right way from Jesus, you cannot do anything that you say, Lord, today I will remain in you and you in me. Today I ask for a double portion of your Holy Spirit. Come on, take more of me. And let, Father, I want more of you and less of me today. More of you and less of me. Come on, can you say that this morning as John the Baptist declared, I need you, I need myself to decrease, and he needs to increase in my life. I need more of Jesus in my life because he in me is the hope of glory. He in me is the healing of the nation. He in me is the blessing for my family because he in me is the knowledge and the wisdom that I need to be successful and every Everything that I do. Hallelujah. Come on. Do not depart from God. Do not depart. Do not let anyone or anything but say, Lord, I will remain faithful. Actually, I'm going to walk two steps deeper into the glory. Three steps deeper into the presence of God. Four steps deeper into relationship with Holy Spirit. Prayer. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Just pray for a moment. Come closer. Come closer. Draw near to God. And God will draw near to you. Come on, your soul needs to walk close, close with Jesus. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you today, today, today. Apart from you, you cannot do anything. Come, come, come home, son. Come home, daughter. Come closer, said the Lord. Come closer, come closer. I have so much to show you, so much to tell you. Oh, what more of you, Jesus? for you. Everything that I have is for you, Jesus.
Bible says, draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. So take a moment right there where you are. It's not that we follow what pastor is praying, but we, we have our own words. And I believe God is saying, come to me closer. And you know in which area of your life you need to, be, you need to come close to God. Maybe you need to step into prayer once again. Maybe you need to serve God. Maybe you need to speak about Jesus. I just I don't know which area of your life, your mind, you are departing. But God is saying this morning, if you can come close. Closer and closer, I will show you my dependence. I will bless you. I will heal you. And I will give you the desires of your heart. Today the invitation is to remain. Remain in the presence of Jesus. And once again, not just Sundays, but every day. When you drive, pray. When you're on the bus, pray. When you are at work, take a moment to read the Bible. Don't be a shame of the gospel. Don't be a shame of Jesus. Because it's His power in the night. Come on, just declare, Lord, I want to be closer this morning. And I've come closer every day. I don't know how many years you've been as believers. Come and just declare, Lord, I'm coming closer. I'm coming closer to you. I need you. I'm a branch. You are the vine. I need you to bear so much fruit. And I want to bear so much fruit for you, God. I want to be fruitful in every area of my life. And I know I need you. I need you today. So come and consume any revelation, any revel re revelation, any disobedience, any doubt, any fear, any regret in the name of Jesus Christ. Any addiction, any temptation that is my, making us walk away from you, consume it today. And let us come closer today. Let, 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 let us come, come closer, closer, closer to Jesus. Come on, let's sing it together. Come and consume, oh God. Come and consume what everything, everything that is holding me back. Come and consume the everything that is pushing me out of the glory. But today I say I'm coming closer, I'm coming closer. Closer, closer, and closer because I am the branch and I need you and I will be flourish, I will be success, I will prosper in your presence. Oh, oh. in the name of Jesus, come on. stuff but I thank you for destruction I know you want you have so much more for us I know you want to bless us I know you want to heal us I know there's mighty things that are coming on their way and we understand this morning that without you we cannot flourish we cannot be success today we remain closer and closer maybe the world is walking away far farther farther but we are coming closer and closer 
we humble ourselves this morning to declare we need you, Jesus. We give you our hearts, we give you our minds, we give you our times, we give you our generation. Father, we live in this moment, close in this moment, declaring that with God we're going to flourish. Come on, if you have a plan, if you have an idea, you have something coming up, just invite Jesus to that moment. You are applying for a new job, come on, invite Jesus. Come on, you're looking for a new opportunity, you, have, you need a new idea, you need something in your home, invite Jesus. Come on, just 30 seconds, invite Jesus, invite Jesus, come on. I need you, Jesus, in my finances. I need you, Jesus, in my debt right now. I need you, Jesus, in my healing. I need you, Jesus, in my marriage. I need you, Jesus, in my son. I need you, Jesus, in my daughter. I need you, Jesus, Father, I work. I need you, Lord. I need you because where, where, where Jesus is, everything becomes alive. And we thank you for your goodness. And we thank you for destruction this morning. We go ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We declare the glory of God in our lives. And we declare that we're going to bear so much fruit for your glory. In the name of this ministry, it's going to be fruitful for your glory. We declare it. We believe it. Prophesy. In the name of Jesus, we sit together. Amen. And amen. And amen. You believe it. Give a mighty applause to Jesus. somebody closer to Jesus. Closer to Jesus every day. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Have a wonderful day. Those that are online, we bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful